constructing a cash flow activity. Cash flow is the money going into and out of a business on a daily basis. Remember, cash flow does not show the amount of profit that the business makes. A cash flow forecast is a prediction of the inflows and outflows of money in the business, whereas a cash flow statement is the actual inflows and outflows of money in a business. For this activity, you're going to need to download some resources via the link at the bottom of this tutorial. Ensure that you download and save a copy to your computer. This will be vitally important if you want to actually interact with this activity as we go along. Okay, how this is going to work is that you will see a series of instructions to this presentation. You should then complete these on your template that you just downloaded. It may be advisable for you to pause the video at each of the stages to ensure that you have enough time to complete each task. OK, let's start with some inflows. This is going to be your cash sales column. The business sells honey at £4.50 per pot. Below the details are the number of honey pots sold each month. So this is the number of pots. So you've got 100 sold in January, 150 sold in February and so on. Remember, you will need to multiply the number of pots by the selling price per pot to get information in your table. You could use a formula in Excel to do this, or you could manually do this using a calculator or mental arithmetic. You may want to pause the video now while you complete this part of the activity. Another inflow that we have is the credit sales. Now, again, the business is still selling the pots at £4.50. However, now it's giving the customers one month's worth of credit. Below are the details of the number of pots sold on credit each month. So again, it's the number of pots. So we sell 50 pots in January, the same in February. And these are the number of pots sold on credit. So what you need to do is ensure you multiply the number of pots by the selling price per pot. But think about where it's going to go when you're giving one month's credit. Again, you may want to pause your video now where you can put this part of the activity. Okay, our last inflow is our personal investment column. Because it's a new business, the owner is going to invest £10,000 in the business in January, and this will set the business throughout the year. No other investment will be made. Now we're going to calculate our total inflows. If you've got a spreadsheet, this is quite simply achieved by using an auto sum. Otherwise, you may want to do this manually using a calculator. Let's look at some outflows. Our first outflow, and our most complex outflow in this spreadsheet, is the cost of sales. So this is where it's going to go in the cost of sales column. Each honey pot actually costs 30% of the selling price to make. Now each honey pot has to be paid for as soon as it's sold, and not when the customer actually pays for it. So this affects our credit sales. They actually have to pay for the pot of honey when they sell it, and not when the customer actually pays for it. You need to consider this when calculating your cost of sales. Think carefully about this. This is a point where you may want to pause the video while you complete this little activity. Now as a simple calculation for our rent, the business is going to pay £2,000 in rent per month and it gets one month's worth of credits on the rent. So it pays £2,000 per month in rent and it gets one month's credit. Our salaries in the business are fairly simple. They just cost £10,000 per month and a fixed cost as we'd expect with a salary. This information goes into our utilities column. Utilities are £2,000 per quarter with the first payment in January. So £2,000 per quarter, so you need to think about what's meant by that term quarter, with the first payment taking place in January. Complete and add this information to your cash flow forecast. And lastly, we're going to have a sundries column. These are costs that we can't easily account for, little things that may happen in the business on a daily basis. So in our business, we're going to allocate £50 per month of sundries, which will take place. Now, we're going to 
use our total outflows column to add all these all up again. Same process again, either do it manually or do it via a spreadsheet. This could be a point where you want to pause your video. Now we're going to calculate our net monthly. Now our net monthly is really dead simple. It's our total inflows minus our total outflows. What we're basically finding here is a profit. What amount of money, either a profit or a loss, has the business made in that month according to their cash flow figure? So hopefully it'll be a profit, but it could be a loss. Calculate this for all of your cash flow. Now, because it's a brand new business, the opening balance in the bank account in January is going to be zero. Now, what you need to do now is think about this. The closing balance for the previous month is always going to become the opening balance of the next one. For example, the closing balance on the 31st of January is going to be the opening balance on the 1st of February. It's just a simple process. You could easily set this up in a spreadsheet or get into the habit of using the pattern if you're constructing this manually. Our closing balance, as we said a minute ago, is always going to be our opening balance for the next month. But to find our closing balance, we just simply do the opening balance plus the net monthly figure that we've got. So our opening balance, whatever we had in our bank account to start with, plus what we made in that month or lost in that month, is our closing balance. And then we carry on this process throughout our spreadsheet. So I want you now to try and work on completing your cash flow forecast. As simple as that. You may want to pause the video now until you're ready to move on, when I'll talk you through the answers and maybe some of the common mistakes you could have made. As you can see, here are the answers. Hopefully your cash flow is looking something similar to check your answers. Have a look at the final figure in the closing balance in October and see if it matches the figure down here. If not, then there's a good chance you probably made a mistake. So let's look at some of the errors that you could have made. Let's start with the inflows, the credit sales. Did you understand that one month's credit meant that the customers who bought the items in January didn't actually pay for them until February? So we had no money coming in for those pots he sold on credit in January, but then that money came in on February. And it's slightly delayed, because in October we had no sales in cash, but we had the credit sales from September being passed through. Total inflows was a simple addition. Then in our rent, the same thing happened again. Remember, we had one month's free rent, or we had one month's credit of rent. So, in theory, he didn't pay anything in January, but then his payment started in February, and they'll carry on throughout the year, one month behind. Also, a more complex calculation could have been the cost of sales. This was the one where we had to find 30% of our items sold. Now, remember, he pays for the items as soon as he sells them. Now, in this case here, the credit sales, when he gets paid for them, he still sold these items technically in January. So what we need to do to find this figure here, was we need to take our cash sales there, and also add it to our credit sales there, because those were sold in the same month, and then multiply them by 0.3 to find the 30%. And that would have found our 30% figure there. Our net monthly was found quite simply by taking our inflows and taking away our outflows. And you can see here, making a loss. Our opening balance was zero, remember? And our closing balance was quite simply that figure there, added onto our net monthly, which gave us our closing balance. And then that rolls through to the next month. Closing balance becomes the opening balance. And the process follows the same pattern of adding that there to that there. And we make more of a loss. And then look at pattern follows again. So you notice the pattern keeps going all the way through. Hopefully. You got the cash flow correct. If so, well done. You have a big pat on the back and well done. You can now construct a complex cash flow forecast. And if not, then if you want to tweet me and ask me any more questions about this, feel free to do that. Or give the YouTube channel a follow. We always like that on the old business bee. And don't forget, you can tweet any areas of business that you want me to cover in the future. Hopefully join us and check out some of our other videos on YouTube. Thanks very much.